morning guys welcome from Minsk it's a beautiful Saturday morning here in the capital of Belarus so today I'm gonna to take you on a journey to a top secret location to the west of Belarus let's do this Poyakili we're in a village somewhere near Zlanem trying to find this secret location and we've left the tarmac road and now we're actually onto a gravel road the trip is really really bumpy and it's going to be like this for the next seven to eight kilometers wow the things that you the length that you go to to go to these different secret locations what a beautiful day it is we've arrived at our destination guys this is on this site is an abandoned Soviet military base. It was abandoned sometime in the early 1990s, 1991, 1992. And you can still see concrete and an old road in this area. This was, this was the site of the 638 rocket or missile division of the Soviet army. And in the Western part of the Soviet Union, they planted these bases for the R-12 missiles, which were short to medium intermediate range missiles. And what we have here in front of me here, here is uh, a building, probably where they used to keep trucks. Hang on a second, guys. Oh, wow. This place hasn't been seen in about 30 years. And there's a tree here in front of me. Okay, look at this. Whoops. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I can get in there into that garage. Okay, and I can go in underneath the foliage. Wow, check this out, guys. Wow, oh, crikey. Oh, this is the abandoned base. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Here's the place. So. We have a sign here up on the, on the wall inside one of the, the garages. I think it says to switch off when leaving, switch off the power. Oops. Oh yes. So we have some graffiti here. It's a guy here from uh, Lithuania, 81, 1981. So obviously here in this, in this base, um, people from, soldiers from all over the Soviet Union were stationed here. As we see, we have 81, Danius Chiplus from, from Lithuania, then it was part of the USSR. Wow. Check out this old Soviet sign, guys. Goodness knows what it says, because it's all chipped off, thanks to the, uh, to the ravages of time. And to get here, I had to come, whoops, I had to come out underneath these trees and nearly went down into a pothole. Wow. So anyway guys, a bit more about this base. This base here traces origins back to the end, a couple of years after the end of the Second World War, sometime around 1947. And this base, what we see here today, the ruins of which we see here today, some more concrete slabs, probably were uh, communication huts. They were built in the early 1960s and as I mentioned they housed the 638 Strategic Missile Division and they held R-12 um, short to medium to medium range missiles. These things did and all along the Soviet Union, on the western frontier of the Soviet Union, they had these bases to protect the country and also to provide cover for the uh, Eastern, other Eastern Warsaw Pact countries. Now, nobody's been here for over 30 years. And as you can see, we have a concrete base here and nature is slowly but surely taking its toll. We had to walk about a kilometer from a road to get here. As I mentioned guys, this place became fully operational and fully functional in the early 1960s. 
and it was that way until about 1990, 1991, when the Soviet army withdrew from this base and the newly independent Belarus took over responsibility of, uh, of this area up to about mid-90s when it was completely abandoned and left to the ravages of nature and to the locals. Got some more ruins over here. So we've just stumbled across, guys, one of the missile silos here. Of course, it's all being co completely concreted over. So back in the day, the missile, this is the place where one of the missiles was launched from. Of course, there's nothing left now at the moment. All right, let's move on, guys, shall we? To the next place. There's a road leading that way. All right. What we have in front of us, another building. Let's investigate. Let's see. Probably another command point. Wow. And as I mentioned, guys, back in the day, the trucks used to come in here and straight into this building here, like a garage or a, car or a bunker. All right, let's investigate a bit further. Let's see what we can see inside. It's amazing how quick nature can, re can replace something. Oh. Right on. There's holes everywhere. Oh, I don't want to fall through the floors. Oh yeah, again, this is very similar to the one of the first places that we went to. I see the ceiling. Concrete, rock concrete. And basically when the Soviet army, when they evacuated this bunker, they took everything with them. Furniture, radios, electronics, everything. Let's move on. Whoa. All right, guys, we found another building just off the, the beaten path here. Better be careful because there are a lot of holes in the ground. Okay. Whoa, don't wanna get set. Uh, fall into one of the holes. Okay, just as well. All right, guys. Wow, look at this. Wow, check this place out. This is the garage. This is the fuel system here. This is Siema Sistemi. Wow. This is the place, obviously. We used to come in here and fix the vehicles. We can see a hole in the roof, probably where they had the chimney with the hole in the roof. Wow. Look at that. Hang on a second, guys. Victor is the guide here. Wow. Check that out, take this out. It, it's written on the wall, so yeah. it's like DMB 2000. So obviously people come back here. And Dijon. Uh, and it's Dijon, a city. yeah. It's a, like a town. G uh, Garod and Dijon. And Dijon. It says Kolya. <laughs> Where yeah. is And Dijon? Kolya Yermakov. Yeah. So the guy actually came back here 20 years ago from And Dijon. Wow. And wrote on the walls here, on the, on the ceiling. Even on the ceiling. Yeah. So people who have served here come back many years later just to leave their memories in different places. Wow. This is actually the entrance where the vehicles used to come in and leave. Let's see what's in here. Wow. Abandoned. Oh, God. Obviously. Just an outhouse there. I think there's part of the garage. Another part of the garage, yeah. Okay, whoa. Bloody hell, guys. So we have another building here, just behind the garage. So we came in from that window there. Oh, it's another garage. Yeah. Ceilings, of course, made. Reinforced concrete. All right, let's push on. All right, guys, we seem to have...
stumbled across another building. We're in the missile launching area. Of course, where they used to put the mobile launchers in different parts of the base. Okay, what is this place here? This place here looks like what it was probably a kitchen or something because we have some tiles, we have a washing area here. Maybe it was for showers. I think that, that, um, that, that, that's a part of a, of a living uh, block. Yeah, we're now actually inside, inside the, the living block, the living quarters of the base. And this place here obviously was the shower room because we can see different bases, shower bases here, here. And the canal, they used to take the outflowing of water. Yeah, there's another place there. Wow, completely gutted, totally destroyed. Ooh. So we have some more buildings here at the back. Okay, that's the building of course where we just came from. Okay, wow. Man, it's so hot here, so humid. But I have to wear my jacket because the flies, the mosquitoes, oops. Oh. Okay, Victor thinks he's found something. Ooh. Well, the top is actually a building, that's, that's a big wall. Yeah. Just behind this uh, mm -hmm. tower, but it must be a barrack somewhere here. Yeah, this place probably is part of a barracks. Well, we can't see anything here. Well, they might be destroyed. Yeah. Maybe a bunker. Okay, guys, anyway, so we just come across here another storage bunker. We can see the cylindrical shape of the ceiling. Just checking for bats in this uh, building here. Yeah, so DMB 86. So soldiers, when they were here. This is Vladimir. Either the name, yeah, Vladimir was the guy's name, 30 days. Probably stationed here. Okay, so we have some more graffiti on the wall. So what the sign says here, soldiers, please sobledi, sobledi pravilna. So soldiers, please obey the rules when in a technical area. Oh, here we are, look, this is the saying here, skora uh, dembiel. Uh, Patsani. Like yeah, this means like this guy's. It means like retirement is near. Taras, Kust, and Sid, three guys who were stationed here, and they're due to be demobilized from the army. Demilia means retirement, and it's three days to retirement. Exactly. Yeah. So guys, when they were stationed here, they would mark off. The times when they would retire, we have uh, BCCR, Minsk. Belarus, yeah, Minsk, Cherkasy. This guy here is from Cherkasy, which is in Russia. And this guy here, uh, this is from Azerbaijan, Baku. So as we saw in the previous place, the Soviet, U the Soviet Union was a multinational, multi-ethnic, multi-confessional state. And the Red Army reflected that. And we can see from the various different graffiti around this place. So we've won here. Vladimir just picked one out, Sevastopol. Another guy, DMB, 86. Autumn Asen, 86, from Sevastopol. So he's leaving. And another guy here from Baku. I, I think that's the same as Baku. Baki, Baku. Uh, Baki, uh, Baku, yes. Six, I think. Yeah. And all around the base, guys, we are, we are seeing these concrete, piece of concrete uh, surfaces. And Victor, whose father-in-law served in the Red Army, in the, in the missile um, mobile units in the Red Army, thinks that the launchers were placed here. And of course the missiles were, faced, were placed high, facing high into the sky, ready for an attack at any moment. Wow. 1988, hard to believe guys. Looking back there in the 80s, guys from Kalinin in Russia, Uzbekistan, it was Azerbaijan, Lithuania, Belarus, all in the one place. 
stationed in the one place. And they left their memories on the many buildings inside this base. On our way back to the car, guys, we stumbled across something that you will find very, very interesting. This is one of the huge missile bunkers or silos that the trucks, uh, were, that's the missiles, they were kept on the trucks and placed into massive, huge silos like this. This place is absolutely huge. Wow, check this place out. Just to give you an idea, guys, of how big, how vast this place is. Well, the R-12 missiles, they were loaded onto trucks and placed into silos like this one. And of course, I'm being followed by the mosquitoes and the flies. Wow. Check this place out, guys. This is unbelievable. Wow. Hard to believe this site was one of the most top secret locations in the former USSR. Very, very few people knew about this place. It was top secret and it housed one of the most important missile silos of the Soviet Union. So when, in case of a nuclear war, of an attack from the West, these missiles were the first to be activated. They were the short to medium term range missiles and they were activated to take out military sites, armies in West Germany and Italy. Wow. And now there's nothing here. Wow, we have some more graffiti here, guys. We have a guy here from Uzbekistan, a DMB. It means that he was demobilized in May of 1984. And this guy here is a dedushka. So what a dedushka was, guys, a dedushka was like a grandfather, a hierarchy in the Russian army. And he used to keep order in the barracks. So he became a dedushka after about uh, a year of service in the Soviet army, this guy here. Ah oh, yes, yeah, Svetlogorsk, first of the 11th, 83. Wow. Oh, this guy here, Kalinin. It was a city in, in Russia. Vesna, spring 85. Wow. 1988. Yeah, this guy here, ACDC, late 80s, 1988. Wow, all the soldiers. I wonder where they are, all the soldiers who served in here, who left their graffiti on the walls of these bases. Especially this huge missile silo here. Okay, let's push on. Let's see what else we can discover here deep in a Belarusian forest in western Belarus not far from Zlodom all right guys we so we've been trekking around this deep unpenetrable forest for the last two hours and we found we found a number of buildings we found part of the living quarters we found some of the observational posts and some of the missile silos from this old Abandoned Soviet missile base. So, wow, guys, I'm tired. Two hours in this heat and flies and mosquitoes. Oh, I've been bitten alive. All right, guys. So anyway, that is it. Comes to the end of our uh, journey. Hope you've enjoyed it. So stay tuned. Keep liking. Keep commenting. And you'll join me and see me on more adventures from strange and unusual places in Belarus. God, I can't wait to get home. I'm, I've been eaten alive by mountains of mosquitoes. Whoa. Catch you guys later. Signing out.